The hosts feel it would be a little unkind to present this podcast without just a word of friendly warning. We are about to unfold the story of Frankenstein, a man of science who sought to create a man after his own image without reckoning upon God. It is one of the strangest tales ever told. It deals with the two great mysteries of creation, life and death. I think it will thrill you. It may shock you. It might even horrify you. So if any of you feel that you do not care to subject your nerves to such a strain, now is your chance to. Well, we've warned you. Hello, and welcome once again to the Frankencast. I'm the mad scientist, Anthony Bowman. My pronouns are he, him, and I'm joined as always by... A twink and a tutu, that is Eric Velasquez. My pronouns are also he, him. <laughs> I, I was really surprised and impressed by the, uh, the portrayal of that character. Uh, obviously, like, in that, when the movie came out, and, like, it doesn't feel like it's fully played for laughs. Like, right. I, don't, I don't think we're... There, to, you know, we, have a, we have two gay characters, I guess, in this, and they are not like laughed at by any of the other characters no, in the, it's just in the like movie. another relationship yeah which is impressive for everything else about this movie would make you think that this would be a, a butt of a of the joke kind of situation yeah they uh, handled it with way more grace and dignity than this this movie deserves <laughs> <laughs> absolutely for <yeah>. sure <laughs> so this week we're talking about frankie and his pals yeah so this is Super, super low budget movie. Um, I think it was filmed on like, like you know, shot on video, VHS camcorder, mm-hmm. um, and like, I mean, like, but it's not, a, it's not embarrassed about it. Like right away, you can tell like the credits are goofy. Oh yeah. Um, like, yeah, like I guess we get like one little cold open scene here first of like uh, a mad scientist talking on the phone to some higher up government official. Right, um, talking about his time machine, a fact that I completely forgot until the end of the movie. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what is he doing this whole time? What, what is this mad scientist doing? What's his whole shtick, right? <laughs> and this, this mad scientist is actually um, the director and co-writer of the movie, Gerald mm-hmm. Cormier. Um, uh, yeah, <laughs> he just like put, gave himself this goofy cameo. Right. Um, <laughs> kind of doing the- an accent, kind of not. He's kind of yeah. swapping in between it. And he's got like uh, an assistant with him who is just a pretty standard issue floozy. I think she's listed as bimbo in the right. credits. Um, but and apparently she's, she's like his girlfriend, effectively, right? Yeah, yeah. Like she's flirting with him. Like they're they're a couple. They're into yeah. each other, even though he's like this kind of like old, grizzled, weird scientist. And she's definitely way younger. Um, and surprisingly, she's smarter than she appears because he starts rattling off some... Uh, equations later on and she's like oh this is code and translates <laughs> it perfectly yeah until she does uh, <laughs> right yeah. uh, but the scene ends like he's you know he's talking to this general and he's like don't worry i won't let anything distract me mm-hmm. and then he looks over and just like checks mm-hmm. out her boobs and it freeze frames on that and then we we go to the credits <laughs> right and the credits are funny i mean like they st- they just start off with the crew and uh everyone has a funny name right yeah, it's like the dude who shot the movie, the dude who did this, or what? Right, the dude who made uh, everyone sound good. Yeah, and okay. like uh, my favorite one was transportation by whoever. Right, right. <laughs> right. That just tells you everything you need to know, right? Basically, yeah. people got in their cars and went places. Yeah, and uh, we also have Gopher Gaffer Giffer. <laughs> yeah, like they're they're just going through all the different names of, or yeah, all the different names of the Gaffer. Yeah. Gopher. Whatever. Yep. So they're, they're like clearly this is a labor of love. They're having a good time. I believe Dracula is played by the director's son. Mm-hmm. So you know it's probably all family and friends. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just the the thing that I, I think we'll get into more as we go. That I I saw something about. So like this movie was written by two guys who were like friends, and then like one of them directed it. And I think one of them wanted to make a kids movie, and one of them wanted to make like a softcore porn, and so they kind of did neither of those things. Right. They kind of did something in the middle. Also, neither and both at the same time to a degree. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, it's it's really hard to say who exactly this movie is for because it's uh, it's got a lot of sexual innuendos, but like none of, they they like, have a lot of sex. Yeah, there are so many sex scenes in this, but everyone is always fully clothed. <laughs> like it's girls in you know bras and panties, like bouncing up and down on a guy in boxer shorts. Yeah, like, pretty much. <laughs> uh, and uh, it's so like yeah, this is the I wouldn't even call this a B movie. This is like a F movie or something like that. Just <laughs> just barely above softcore porn, right? Yeah, but but yeah, like everybody is having fun, and, and like we said, like they're you know we have th- these gay characters that are treated very well. Like mm-hmm. um, it's silly, but it's it's sort of intentional, you know. Like it's it's not just poking fun at everything. It's it's got sort of an idea of what it's right. trying to do. And like you said, like going into this thing, it it felt like a kids movie, right? Mm-hmm. That is until uh, both Frankie and one of the town's uh, elders goes shit <laughs> it's like oh this is not a kids movie okay and then it yeah. definitely stops being a kids movie yeah so uh we we also let's go ahead and get this started from the beginning right so we have two dudes that are digging a grave in the graveyard mm-hmm. they're they're trying to put on an accent but that's not their accent yeah it's like they're they're doing a southern thing but it's yeah it's not quite coming across they're they're it's you've got a, like a an older black man and a younger black man and it's like you know the old timer teaching the young guy but because of the accents they're putting on like it almost sounds like they're doing like a you know a a slave kind of dialect thing but i I don't think that's what they're going for but it it does read a little weird um yeah like one guy is basically like he has the elocution of alfonso ribiero but he's (laughs) trying to trying to put on some slang yeah yeah and I mean, these clearly these people are all in California, and mm-hmm. you know, so they're they're, they're kind of yeah, they're they're not from the South, and so it, it is. It's I don't think it's bad, and I don't think it's like you know, definitely not intentionally bad, but it it, it could definitely be read a little weird because of just people not knowing how to do the accents that they're attempting. Right. Exactly. So let uh, they then start talking about how their uh, monsters buried up in the hills in the mountains. Mm-hmm. Possibly where some gold might be. Yeah, there's like an old folk tale that like some monsters went into a cave and like there was a, an avalanche or something and that they're stuck in there. This is the old timer telling the guy, you know, the, all the, the, the new guy. local legends. And he's like, I don't like that. I'm just, you know, I used to be, I think he used to be like a, some kind of other farm person. Like he was like, I forget, he specifically used to pick one thing. He was, he keeps re- bringing it up picking tomatoes or something i don't know uh but uh he's like maybe i should go back to that i don't like all this monster stuff um and then we go from that to yes this is actually true we have uh, a group of monsters waking up in the cave hold on Uh, why are we playing a military like call the arms bugle (laughs) <laughs> like the, that, 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 what, what is that about? Yeah, like who's playing that? The, it, it is kind of parallel with them all waking up, but mm-hmm. no one is playing it. It's just like on the soundtrack. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we have you know Frankie, Drac, um, and I think it's just the mummy. I don't think he has a name, but the mummy has a puppet a, inside of him called the Pophis, which is just the worst. <laughs> For some reason, this mummy seems to be mute and can only have, like, telepathic conversations with this parasite that's sticking out of his stomach. Right. But the parasite can talk and people can hear him. Um, I'm not sure... This is one of the more interesting, unique things about this. I don't know what what led them to this weird idea. Yeah. Um, But... I mean, maybe, I guess when, when they mummify people, technically they probably do remove the tongue when they remove all the organs, so maybe that's where they're going. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't um, know. All I know is this thing looks like a Skeksis that's coming out of his crotch almost. <laughs> yeah. So take of that what you will. Yeah, and we also have a wolf man named Wolfie and a hunchback named Humper. Humpy. Yeah, Humper. That's right, Humper. <laughs> why? Why? <laughs> why? <laughs> And for whatever reason, the Dracula is... To me, it sounded like he was doing an impression of Christopher Lloyd. Yeah! Like, <laughs> like that's the whole thing, right? Because I was like, I know who this guy is doing an impression, but who is it? And then Christopher Lloyd, that was it. Got it. Yeah. Yeah, it's just that kind of like shaky Doc Brown kind of like wackiness to his voice. Yep. Um, but yeah, so we have them all waking up. Um, 
and then we also go to like a town council meeting it's like a little small town um and there's a woman who we find out is like a a lawyer tax Mm -hmm. attorney kind of person who's presenting to the the uh town council that basically we er, the the town owes a lot of back taxes and we're kind of fucked like uh we basically have to raise this money in a very short amount of time or we're uh we're in big trouble right Um, so and then from there, we pretty much head right on to the monsters playing monsters playing poker with <laughs> yeah. with two, twos, threes, fours, fives, sixes, and jokers all being wild. So it's like <laughs> it's like make up your own hand, basically, right? <laughs> yeah, which leads to some really funny like. Um, so right away, we felt like the the uh, Apophis like keeps telling what the mummy is holding. Right, uh, just narking on the guy. <laughs> but it's like the mummy's got seven queens because you can have seven queens if you have that many wild cards. Right. Um, and we end up. I think Frankie ends up winning the hand. He has ten aces. Right. Well, Drac thinks he did because he had ten kings. Right. Mm, yeah. Yeah. And then and yeah, what Frankie ten kings, ten aces. Yep. Ten aces. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we kind of bounced back and forth between the town council, the poker game, and the grave diggers. And it sort of like sets the stage for everything. One of the one of the um, things Frankie wins in the pot is a treasure map, right? Uh, that Humper had, <laughs> just, mm-hmm. just had. Yeah, it's just been holding on to. And you know, the town council, of course, they need exact like they give the exact amount of money. It's one million two hundred thirty-eight thousand four hundred sixty-three dollars and thirty-eight cents. And it pops and get, up on screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just to make sure you knew the exact amount for whatever reason. Maybe it was yeah. the cost of the movie. <laughs> right. And they just wanted to let you know how much this is being made for. Yeah. I don't so, see it, though. I, I'd be surprised if it really took $1 million to make this movie. Both no, I, I would think this is in the thousands for sure. Yeah. Maybe even, yeah, like this. Maybe, I mean, some, the, some of the sets are nice, but it, I guess it kind of depends on, like, the, most of it's in sh- shot in, like, an old hotel. And if yeah. they just had access to that in some way, then I'm sure the budget could have dropped significantly on this and just been the monster makeup basically yeah there's no way this isn't just like they had access to these these spaces right Mm -hmm. they were either free or cost less uh next to nothing yeah um so so the stakes are kind of building though we know the monsters have actually have this map that could lead to a bunch of money the -hmm. town needs Needs a bunch of money um and then we have these two grave diggers who are kind of stuck in the middle here yeah for sure but of course, Dracula's like, "Hey, let me see that map." Oh, it's it's the town of French Gulch, which I think we're right outside of, right? Yeah, but unfortunately, we're still trapped in this cave, so the map doesn't do any good. Um, but then we get the Deus Ex Machina that we'll see a few times over the course of this, um, which Frank is and that, beans. Yep, Frankie ate a bunch of chili beans, and he has to fart, and when he does. He produces a fireball strong enough to blast the cave entrance open again. Why did? By the way, why do they have so many chili beans? Like, <laughs> and they're Save a Lot brand, by the way. <laughs> did you notice that? Yeah. As, as a poor person, <laughs> Save a Lot chili beans. Yeah, I mean, you know, the movie budget once again, they had to buy the the cheapest beans they could get. You just got uh, it, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but but this absolutely came out of someone's pantry, or at least the crew ate it later, right? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Um, anyway, but but yeah, yeah, Frankie's like, come on out, Dra-. everyone leaves. Frankie's mm-hmm. like, come on out, Dracula, and Dracula's like, it's not daytime, is it? Because you know what happens during the day. <laughs> and it's, I mean, Clearly it's day. not, it's, yeah, it's maybe evening at best. Like, yeah, um, it is, yeah, the, there is definitely light outside, but it's apparently dark enough that, that Drac is okay. Um, so we have the monsters start to walk out. For some reason, uh, he calls Frankie a fart knocker, which I guess that makes sense. <laughs> with the chili yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is again, you know, the juvenile humor, the, the, the kid mm-hmm. angle here for sure. Um, we get another scene quickly with the mad scientist who is like, yeah, I, I'm going to test things, but I got to wait. The, the town has like a big party and I don't want to hurt any innocent bystanders, so we're going to wait until that's over with. Right. Did you notice the weird green glow coming from the cabinet this time? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Oh some some radioactivity probably you know, there. Just, just casually <laughs> chilling in your cabinet, right? Yeah. But uh, we also get a funny joke where the, uh, the secretary slash girlfriend slash bimbo uh, is talking about, wait, so like... 
time travel is real like the Easter Bunny? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then we get one of the goofiest things in this incredibly goofy movie, which is that we get a very long scene of the monsters walking to town while the worst rap song you have ever heard in your life. Okay, uh, okay. So this is like Charlie Daniels from The Devil Went Down to Georgia is like trying to rap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's, uh, again, it's somebody doing like a, a faux, like, southern accent. Um, and and he's basically like, he's introducing you to all of the monsters. But he's also recapping the whole film that we've seen thus far. Yeah, the like, f- you know, five or ten minutes of movie we've seen so far. But it also is in like the wrong order. Like, he talks about them walking on the street, and then he yeah. talks about that they, oh, now they just escaped out of the cave, and yeah. Uh, and yeah, I mean, and there's no like it's it's just like a sleepy slow drawl. It is it is, you know, not a, a quick impressive rap in and, any way. And by the way, he just casually brings up we're talking about five monsters and one of them's gay. What? <laughs> yeah, and it's gonna be a while before we find out which one is gay. Like he's right. he's he's teasing something <laughs> here. Um. <laughs> I don't know if this is good good storytelling or awful storytelling. <laughs> It's it's uh, it's a choice for sure. It's a choice, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like it's t- it's like, hey, guess what? One of them's gay. What does that matter? I don't know. <laughs> it mostly is just like the previous line ended with an A sound, and it was like, what do we? Oh, yeah, well, we do know that one's gonna be gay, so that that'll work, I guess. So, so here's my question: What came first, the script, and then the the guy who wrote the rap, like, <laughs> did the rap, or <laughs> did the rap come first? And they were just like, we're going with it. <laughs> I would, yeah, I think the, the script must, I, I don't know. You're like, right. Um, but I th- there is like a, we'll later have like a, a band at this like party. Um, and I think that it's a real band that they were friends with. And I think that one of the band members wrote this rap as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's something. Mm-hmm. Uh, they eventually, the monsters, bump into the grave diggers because the obviously the graveyard's kind of on the outskirts of town and yeah. you know as is the cave because they're mostly um, friendly they ask for directions and just scare the grave diggers off yeah they run away and they're like what got into them that's uh, strange um and then <laughs> they uh they continue down the road and they <laughs> bump into um a couple who are, who are like you know uglies yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're, uh, yeah, this couple having sex in their car, but it's a, it's a pretty great gag because the girl, like, we can't see what's going on in the car, Mm -hmm. but we hear a woman scream and the guy's like, damn, honey, am I that good? But obviously she's screaming because she saw the monsters because then he sees the monsters, he screams, and then the car speeds off. Right. And of course, Apophis thinks that's hilarious and goes, damn, honey, am I that good? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So, um... Then, so we kind of like this movie doesn't really have much of a plot structure. It's mostly the monsters bumbling around through the human world and like at various degrees of success. Yeah. Um, So the first thing we see is they wander into like an aerobics class. um, And oh, are we not going to talk about how the Undertakers just return to the scene of monsters and they're like, might as well finish our job? Oh yeah. Now that the monsters have wandered off, we can get back to work. Yeah. (laughs) Monsters. If monsters are proven to be real. I'm just like, dude, I'm done. <laughs> there were monsters <laughs> yeah. up there. You're going to have yeah. to deal with that whatever way you feel is comfortable. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> um, and, but so, for, you know, the, the grave diggers and the, the teens in the car, or the, the people in the car, I guess, um, they were scared. But mm-hmm. now these, these women doing uh, aerobics, they assume that the monsters are people in costumes. So they're Which, like, yeah, great, great costumes. Let's, let's uh, exercise together. So Makes sense. Okay. Yeah, and which it does, it definitely does make sense because we will find that, like, there's a costume party getting ready to happen. Right. Um, now, of course, one lady, uh, the hunch, uh, Humper, st- seems like he's into her. He's like, I only got one hump, but you got two humps. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he is <laughs> going to basically consider this lady ugly for the rest of the movie after this. I don't know it's, why. I'm very confused about this. So, yeah, like, he, 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 like, uh, you know, tries to to like grope her in this scene. Like his his ma- you know, I mean, his name's Humper. His main personality trait is that he's Humpy. horny. Yeah. Um, and yeah, he tries to grope this lady, and she kind of slaps him away. Um, and then yeah, for the rest of the movie, they she seems to be into him, and he keeps running away from her. 
and I mean, she, you know, we have all these, these like thin ladies in, in spandex and this woman is a, a heavier lady, but like, yeah, I don't like they, he never makes fat jokes about her or no. anything. Like he just is, seems to be like avoiding her. I, it's yeah. I don't know what the joke was there. It, it definitely doesn't land whatever's yeah. going on. Yeah. It's, it's, um, a, it's definitely a choice, but it's not the right one. Yeah. Um, they, they, and, uh, you know, Humper being this, this horny guy and trying to grope this, he also repeatedly, like, slaps women's asses throughout this whole movie, and it never works out for him. Well, um, he takes cues from Casanova. <laughs> Literally, mm-hmm. that's the character's name. Uh, <laughs> who just goes around groping all the women, and everyone seems cool with it. Yeah, everybody's into it, but then he, Humper thinks that's an invitation, like, well, I mean... These he girls just it. like getting their asses grabbed. I'm going to try too, and it never works for him. Right. Um, this is definitely, uh, you know, a sign of this being like an 80s movie. You know, this is like yeah. Porky's kind of humor. Uh, you know, it obviously d- did not age well. No. Uh, but it's it's never, you know, I mean, I, I, like it's it's not played like as if these women feel like it's a sexual assault or anything. Like they're right. just like, you gross, go away. And uh, so you kind of have to take that with a grain of salt for the time period. It, yeah. it definitely doesn't play well now though. No, I mean, yeah, obviously this would be considered SA for the most part. These characters seem to be into it, but I, yeah, like you yeah. said, it doesn't age well. <laughs> yeah. So I guess there's uh, your content warning if you need it. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it's all, I mean, yeah, everything in this is juvenile humor. There, mm-hmm. There's nothing that's like, like you know really intentionally like you know vile or it whatever seemed, but everything seems consensual for the most part yeah um eventually you know the monsters kind of get bored of the aerobics they they move on and they end up at like this kind of old-timey hotel yes it's um, the french lick uh what is it french or not french lick french gulch hotel mm-hmm. yeah um and you know frankie has his map he's trying to figure out where they need to go he's trying to read it but obviously cannot <laughs> yeah so dracula takes it from him and he's like oh yeah according to this map the gold is in the hotel right uh, and it's just so, like a very rough sketch of the area with like a box that says gold in it <laughs> yeah uh but lucky for the monsters they go inside and it's a costume party so no one is skeptical of these you know five monsters rolling around mm-hmm. um so, There's a random dude at the front desk who's trying to like get keys and get inside, but nobody's there. So for some reason, he decides he's going to act like the the hotel yeah. manager. Yeah, and he so he gives the monsters some some keys, and when they go upstairs, it turns out there are people having sex in the rooms that are supposed to be theirs. Right. Um, and you know this is, or we have the I think Humper, I don't know how, why like gets sidetracked. Yeah, he so the rest. The- the um the bartender downstairs and she yeah. is very attractive yeah and so it turns out there's like a, a a sort of weird cellar door behind the bar that goes like down in you know underneath the building um and humper ends up down there and ends up getting like trapped because the bartender closes the thing on him and he can't get out right so he he just starts wandering around trying to find the gold down there while the other monsters are trying to find their room. And right, they yeah, walk it, in on a, a cowboy slash cowgirl couple mm-hmm. uh, that just turn and go, what the hey? <laughs> yeah. And then we get a thruple, and the dude pops up, and he's like, hey, there's room for one more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, Frankie is like, what's happening? What's going on? I don't know. What are they right. doing? And Drax's like, ah, I'll, explain, I'll to explain it to you later. And he's like, okay. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so they, they go back downstairs and tell the, the person at the front desk, their, uh, their rooms are already occupied. They need new ones. Right. Um, now, by the way, Dracula, for some reason says this is much appreciated twice to the yeah. same guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then we see that the, the hunchback has wandered into like this whole elaborate cave system underneath the building. Um, and it eventually leads back to the graveyard. He pops out. Again, scaring the grave diggers who were trying to get back to work. Right. Rough, man. But then uh, <laughs> Dracula has the boys uh, case the hotel. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they're, uh, yeah, they're looking for the gold, you know, trying different rooms and everything, uh, not having any luck. Uh, 
Meanwhile, the hunchback now needs a ride back to the hotel. Right. Well, he, the, the grave diggers are actually like running from him. Mm-hmm. And they hop, just hop in the back of a truck and hide. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, Humper bumps into these two uh, attractive girls who are like, you need a ride to the party? We're headed that way. Why don't you just hop in the back? So he's yeah. like, sure. He hops in the back where the grave diggers are, scaring them again. Hi, boys. <laughs> yeah. So they they run away again. And Oh, we... by the way, while they drive off, did you notice that Humper uh, eats shit on the tail bed? <laughs> <laughs> like, as yeah. they pull off, he just falls forward. Yeah. And I'm sure they were just like, ah, it's fine. We don't yeah. need to film that again. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. It's at the end of the scene. What does it matter, right? Yeah. Uh, so now when, when Humphrey gets back to the hotel, he's trying to find his friends. He goes to all of the exact same rooms we've already seen. So we see the same groups of people having sex again. Um, and you know, again, the Humper gets invited to join the thruple and strangely does not take them up on it considering everything else about this character. Um, and like this was his chance. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so they, uh, they all kind of, you know, they've been looking for gold. They end up reconvening down in like the ballroom area where there's like a dance party going on. Uh, a lady runs into the mummy and for some weird reason, Apophis asks if she wants to bump peepees. <laughs> yes. And I'm like, oh, Apophis is the gay one. <laughs> right? Yeah. And of course she slaps him. Um, the and mommy's like, get... what are peepees? <laughs> yeah. Well, you see, they're these little squeaky toys. Nah, never mind. <laughs> uh, so we get the first of several just like full dance scenes where just like a band plays an entire song and we just see people dancing. Yeah. Uh, they're definitely padding the runtime of the movie here quite a bit. Yeah, um, this, this is where we get Casanova groping the uh, the French maid. Mm hmm. And yeah, Humper tries to, to also grope her. She slaps him. Uh, then he sees the the woman from the aerobics thing earlier, and he hides from her. Um, and then Drac is like, "We we need to keep searching. We can't get distracted." But then there's like some pretty girls who want to dance with him, and he's like, "Oh, okay. We could get a right. little distracted." This is one. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Wow, it's an incredibly overly long dance scene. Mm hmm. We, we get a, yeah, like there's little cutaways here and there of various characters doing stuff, but we get, uh, I mean, I think we get two whole songs here. Yeah. Uh, Humper goes to the bathroom, comes out with toilet paper stuck to his pants. Yeah, like where he's like, actually pull- laughs at him. This is the yeah. only reason they laugh. By the way, I appreciate that this is the only reason people laugh at him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, kind of everyone, funny. yeah. Um, then we get, um, Wolfie f- bumps into this girl dressed like Little Red Riding Hood, and he follows her back to her room, where they start making out, um, and then, uh, Apparently, he's not able to complete it, though. Yeah, we get, like, the classic scene where she's like, it's okay, you know, yeah, it happens to a lot of guys, it's very normal. Right. Um, and she's like, maybe, maybe if you took off the mask, it'd be a little less weird, you might be able to, to, to go again, or whatever, and he's like... I told you this isn't a mask. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but by the way, she she strips her she strips naked and she's like, uh, "What is it?" She says, uh, "Well, you you still know what to do." Mm-hmm. And, and she throws his, her panties into his face and he sniffs them because he's a wolf, of course. Yeah, and, and she of course she's off camera because we're not going to see any nudity in this movie. But uh, does that mean like does he does he give her cunnilingus? Does he do the cunnilingus on her? Ah, uh, yeah, I don't know because that's that's all we'll see of her. We don't yeah. see her again. Um, oh well. <laughs> um Did we get a we rock go, band interlude yeah another another dance scene um uh frankie like shoves everybody out of the way so he can do like a really like goofy dance but people are like into it they're all like you know it's kind of the thing where like the crowd's in like a circle and they're like you know go frankie and he's just doing right. this silly dance we um, also get a bunch of shots from the girl just the girls from mm-hmm. er, all the girls earlier in the movie yeah, yeah. Every girl we've seen, the aerobics girls, the sex scene girls, all of them. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we see a little later, Wolfie goes outside and pisses on a fire hydrant because Wolf. Yeah, that makes um, sense, right? But hey, also, he kind of gets them on a guy, the king guy's leg. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then yeah, Wolfie goes back inside, and the guy's like, "Wait, my why is my leg wet? What happened?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
it. Right, but when whenever the Wolfman goes inside, uh, he's sitting at the bar, and there's a a twink in a tutu uh, mm-hmm. that's just kind of waving at him, and he starts waving back, acting all shy and demure and all that. So okay, Wolfman's the gay one. Yeah. Yep. And uh, the this uh, the guy in the tutu will introduce himself as Clover. Right. Um, okay. This is kind of smooth though. Mm-hmm. Wolfman's like clover, like the four leaf clover, like the kind you get lucky with, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Clover's like, absolutely, and you can totally get lucky with me. There you go. Congratulations, boys. <laughs> <laughs> and, but, yeah, Clover's <laughs> really in Oh, sorry. I uh, just Clover's an interesting character. I mean, like, he's kind of he he uses he him pronouns. We'll we'll hear him refer to himself. So that yeah. but like He's kind of gender ambiguous. He's got a little bit of a mustache, but like like you said, he's wearing a tutu. He's got yeah. kind of like a a queer mullet, uh, you know, just a just a very unique character here for this movie, and is treated fully straightforward the whole time. <laughs> no, um, sorry, <laughs> straight, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, they they dance together, and they're like it's sweet, like it, you it know, like, it's yeah, it's it's very romantic, and it's very you know not played for laughs at all. But when they walk uh, off, he says something. I don't, what does this mean? Make way for the boys of summer. There will be ducks on the pond tonight. <laughs> <laughs> what does yeah. that mean? <laughs> no clue. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm uh, just making sure I didn't just have a stroke. And... <laughs> uh, elsewhere, we have Dracula hearing that a guy order a Bloody Mary, and he's like, mm, yeah, Bloody I'll have Mary. one of those too. Huh? You know. Yeah. Um, and then exactly. I think eventually he tries it and is like, oh, no, this is not what I wanted at all. Yeah, I didn't um, drink vodka. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, but also the guy sitting next to him notices that Dracula doesn't have a reflection. So he's like, oh, I'm drunk. <laughs> That's what this is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then we will get, uh, this is the scene I think you were talking about. We get the scientist again on the phone with someone. Or he, or he gets a call and his secretary girlfriend bimbo mm-hmm. um is on the you know is it has taken the call and she's like I, i'll just dictate what you want me to tell him so he says a bunch of like equations and everything and she says other th- like it but he never stops her so it seems like she's interpreting what he's saying Correct. correctly yeah. um and you know so she, so they kind of have this sort of silly telephone game bit here um and then we, we end up back at the party where Clover is now looking for Wolfie. Yeah, uh, where's my Wolfie? Yeah, that kind of becomes a running line for him. He's always looking for his Wolfie. Uh, and people point him upstairs. When, when he gets up there, the Wolfie is like... I, I couldn't quite tell. What is Wolfie actually doing with this other guy? He, he's flirting with him because he looks... So the other guy's in a toga. And the Wolfman looks up his skirt. <laughs> Sure, why not? I mean, that, I guess that's what we're doing here. Everyone's basically sexually assaulting everyone else, but everyone's cool with it. Yeah. <laughs> everyone's DTF, but the other guy's, like, more annoyed than anything that Wolfie's looking up his skirt. Yeah. And obviously Clover's upset. She's like, you just... I thought we were in love, and you're a two-timer already. And yeah, like you're drags two-timer already. Him. Yeah. Then we go to a, a woman in, like, a leopard print bikini who right. is trying to hit on Frankie... Well, he's in bed, and she just walks in and lays on mm-hmm. the bed with him. Yeah, and she's like, me, Jane, you big Tarzan? And he's like, no, me big Frankie. Frankie. Yeah, uh, she looks under the, the cover, and she's like, you are big Frankie. I'm <laughs> out of here. Yeah. So she is definitely not into the size of this man. He is too big. <laughs> yeah, and it's pretty good, because then Frankie, like, after she leaves, he lifts up the sheet and looks big at Frankie. Look, And he's just like, yeah. <laughs> like, he's pretty proud of his giant dick. <laughs> I mean, listen, man. Like, he, he just got the wrong one. That's all. <laughs> yeah. There's someone out there for him, for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, so anyway, then we cut to the mummy who's in the bathroom. What is he even doing there? Because th- th- he's, like, on the toilet. There's a guy next to him who's peeing. He looks at the dude's dick, which is weird, obviously. <laughs> yeah. But the guy's like, hey, what the fuck? <laughs> Keep your eyes ahead, you know? <laughs> and uh, Apophis obviously makes fun, and he's like, uh, don't worry about that, uh, mummy. You don't have one of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I guess, you know, the mummy has just been, like, you know, rem- like had all kinds of, you know, things removed when he was mummified and Apophis I mean, or just... Or it could have just rotted off, you know? Yeah, yeah, true. Um, 
Meanwhile, we go back to Wolfie and Clover, and he's sort of now, I guess this is his apology attempt. Right, a he, serenade. He sings a song to Clover, and he, again, sings a whole ass song. A whole um, fucking, like, this is not a, like, minute long song. This is a solid two to three minute long written song. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it, it, he's like playing it. It's the, the werewolf with an acoustic guitar, uh, you know, serenading Clover. And it's Damn like it, the werewolf, the fuck boy. It makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah it's like, he rhymes Clover with, I want you to be my lover. Yeah. Um, and like the chorus is just him howling and Clover starts howling along. So they're, they're, it's working. They're, they're, uh, seem to be, uh, on good terms again. I guess so. But anyway, now Frank has to do the pee pee walk. Uh, <laughs> walks over to the balcony and just pisses off the edge onto the king guy. So the yep. king guy get, keeps getting pissed on. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So so we get that and we go um, to another scene with Humper trying yeah, to grab another lady's ass. A cowgirl now. Mm hmm. And then we get the mummy trying to make a move as well. He sees right. a girl dressed like Cleopatra. So he's right. into that. Uh, and he just like drenches himself in cologne. Well, uh, he roots through her purse, so this is her perfume. <laughs> I didn't even notice that. Yeah, he steals her perfume, and as he walks out, the cowboy says, "You smell like a French whore." <laughs> yeah, whatever that means. Yeah, I, my mom used to say that when I was a kid. Like, if somebody had like that was her description of someone wearing too much cologne. So I guess that's just a an older saying (laughs) not not definitely not a pc one people would use now but um but then drax sees a a girl asleep on a couch oh yeah yeah and so he just drains some blood from her and while he's doing that the mummy bumps into um the girl in the french maid costume that we saw earlier right and apophis immediately has to spout out exactly what the cowboy said to to uh, the mummy yeah, so now she's in a French costume, and it is, he says she smells like a French whore, so she slaps the mummy. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I mean, the, the dynamic with Apothis and the mummy is definitely, Apothis gets the mummy into trouble, and then the mummy just has to deal with it. Right. Um, yeah. But then uh, we get a nice little turn on the, uh, the thing we've seen with Casanova all night. So all night, Casanova has just literally walked up, groped women, give them a kiss, and walked off, and everyone was happy about it. Well, he does this to a cheerleader... Uh, who is, by the way, she's just bending over, showing her ass. Yeah, she's doing, like, a whole cheerleader routine, but a big part of it is, like, yeah, pulling up her skirt and just, like, shaking her ass. Right. Well, she actually slaps Casanova Mm -hmm. when he tries this shit. And he's like, oh, can't win them all, and just walks off to go find another more willing participant, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. I figured this would be the time Humper comes in and actually wins, right? (laughs) Yeah. This is his win, but no, he, he doesn't. Instead, yeah, he yeah, it doesn't work on him either, and so he gets up on a table and tries to dance. The table collapses, mm-hmm. and then he like just runs away in embarrassment and ends up hiding in a closet. Yeah, uh, where the cowboy and cheerleader are now fucking. Yep. So they yeah they come in, and so Humper's watching them from the closet. But Humper also is he. I guess uh, this is like a you know, uh, um, Hunchback of Notre Dame kind of thing. You know, the bells, the bells. Uh, he just has like a handbell that he carries around with him. Yeah. Um, and he starts, he gets so excited watching them have sex that he starts ringing the bell. Right. Um, well, and, what's going on in the, in the closet? And he bumps out, hops out, hop, bumps out, hops out and says, ride him cowboy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so they, you know, kind of push him out of the room mm-hmm. and we go back for another full dance number. This time it's like a kind of like a slower country kind of song. Um, and like, it seems like the people don't really know what to do with this song. Like, they don't know how to dance to it. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's very bizarre. It's like they're pairing off, like, guys and girls. Mm-hmm. They do, yeah, it's like where, the, you know, it's like a, people line up and, and, you know, different pe- couples kind of come down the middle and show off their moves. But they're all weird. Like, no one knows what to do. And it ends up with, like, you know, Humper ends up getting paired with the uh, the woman that he keeps trying to run away from. And he, again, runs away screaming... Yeah, but she's just dancing. She's fine with it. Yeah, yeah like, yeah, she seems still into him, but is not, like, too heartbroken about him being a jerk to her. She's just, yeah. she seems comfortable with herself. She's here. She's having a good time. If it works yeah. with him, great. If not, she's fine. Yeah. 
um, and we see <laughs> we all we there's a scene here with Frankie who he just like picks a fight with a guy at the bar. Well, apparently which, the guy's a troublemaker because there's a couple people that are like, "Oh, this guy, he's he's awful. We don't like him. If only we could get rid of him." Oh, uh, okay. Because I was like, "Why is Frankie starting a fight?" Like, he, Frankie seems like the chill, friendly one, but that right. makes sense if he's kind of trying is, to. There's no reason. <laughs> he's just wanting to have a fight scene in this one. Yeah. So yeah, we end up with that. Um, well, he does the bit from uh, Star Wars Episode Four, you know, the the New Hope, where they're they're in the bar and. Um, uh, Moss Eisley? I, think mm. I don't like you. <laughs> yeah. But he doesn't have a friend to say he doesn't like you either. Yeah. Um, and while the fight's going on, Humper ends up hiding under... Or he hides under a table to get away from the, the girl. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's a bunch of other women sitting around the table, so we get some Humper eye view, you know, upskirt crotch shots of all these girls. Because yeah. um, you got it, right? Yeah. yeah. And they're like, you pervert. And he's like, no, me, Humper. Right. Um, they just kind of laugh at him. Yeah, again, yeah, everybody is just like chill. Like this, It's like, well, I, I was going to say this, you know, like you said, everybody seems DTF. But like even like if this was like at a sex club, there would be more consent stuff going on, you know, you more think. like taking it seriously. Here, everybody's just like, go with the flow, whatever happens. They're all fine. Right. It was um, kind of like you walked in the door. That's your consent. Right. <laughs> yeah which is not, not good right but um, then we get the teeny weeny bikini contest yeah and so they decide the the contest is happening and they've decided that the people with the best costumes get to be the judges so of course it's the monsters the, you know they're not in costume um and we get you know several ladies coming out in like you know with big teased 80s hair mm-hmm. and those like you know high cut 80s bikinis um, and you know, it just, the different girls come out and the, I think it's like three or four and the, the last one ends up being the, you know, the, the girl that's trying to get with Humper. Tammy, uh, Tammy is her name. Yeah. Yeah. We finally get her name here. And again, you know, it's th- figuring out what this movie's trying to say sometimes is weird because, you know, Humper is treating her as if she is unattractive in some way. Right. Uh, but now and during this contest, Everybody cheers for her when she comes out. Everybody, um, like, no one is like, oh, gross, it's the fat lady or whatever. Everyone's right. just like, they're into it. They're happy. She ends up winning, right? Like, yeah. she, yeah, like, so it's very strange. Like, I'm I, I'm not sure what the joke is with Humper not wanting to be with her. It does. It just does not fit with everything else this movie is telling us. I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's because he's, quote, unquote, ugly and finding someone else repulsive. That's funny, I guess. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to add reason where there's no reason to be added. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to stop right now. <laughs> but then uh, we get Frank bunny hopping around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's like, he's kind of drunk. Um, and Drac is like, oh, I know what you need. Um, and he has him stick his finger in like the circuit breaker box and he gets like electrocuted and that kind of like uh, gets rid of him being drunk. Like he's back to yeah. normal. Give, recharges them, right? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so Dracula reveals he had, now has a plan to get rid of all the band by getting them drunk so that they can basically casually case the joint. Yeah, as long as the band is playing, the party's going to keep going. So mm-hmm. if we get the band drunk, it'll end the party, and then we'll be able to search more easily. Right, and he follows down the bartender. Uh, he drains her blood. Mm-hmm. And he's very impressed. She has type O, vintage 65. What a good year. <laughs> what a good year, right? <laughs> yep. Then we get a guy dressed up, I'm guessing, as a sheik. Uh, mm. Asks a cowgirl for a roll in the hay. Okay. I thought he was maybe a shepherd. But, yeah, either way. Like, yeah, he's in, and you know, kind of just like a long sort of plain cloth, uh, you know, gown kind of thing. Right. Um and the Apophis is like mocking him while because he's not doing well with this girl. Mm-hmm. Um, and then yeah, we see Drac at the bar, or you he know, is, he is plying them with drinks. Mm-hmm. Like he pours basically a whole bottle, and he's like, "All right, well, you all had that. Uh, let's let's get another bottle in you real quick." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. The band very quickly is all just like head down on the bar, like just passed out. Mm-hmm. Um, and we also have uh, Clover's still looking for Wolfie. Yeah, um, 
and I forget, I don't remember what the pickup line that the shepherd tries to use, but um, we next we we see the the king guy from from outside. He's at the bar, and Apothis tries to use the same pickup line on him. So yeah. it seems like Apothis might be gay as well, or else right. is just just doing his thing where he likes to spout things at people and just you know cause trouble. Right. Um, and the guy's like, "Oh, I'm getting hit on by a gay mummy." Yeah. He's like, first I get pissed on by a werewolf, then I get pissed on by a Frankenstein, <laughs> right. and now I'm getting hit on by a gay mummy. <laughs> That's fair. Why not? You know. Uh, yeah, so he, you know, he wanders off, and then Clover comes in with Wolfie. They're hand in hand. Hey. They found each other. Everything's okay, um, and the band is all asleep at the bar. Yep. But you know, so Drax like, great. We we've, we've gotten rid of the music. Now things are going to go our way. But we instead, got rid of the first band. We got band number two now. Yeah. Now the monster, the rest of the monsters all run over and pick up instruments, and they start. Uh, Frankie's like, all right, boys, let's hit it in the key of X, and they start playing a song right because x is extreme <laughs> yeah so yeah, the no. song is kind of metal but you know it's like silly 80s metal it's also a recap of the entire story again <laughs> yeah including like frankie is singing that like we are actually monsters we're not guys in costume and we're here because there's gold hidden and we're looking for right. it and drac is like shut the fuck up <laughs> right. you're gonna ruin everything <laughs> It's amazing. Yeah, so he Drac manages to stop him, and he's like, it is time to get serious. We've got to look. The sun's going to be coming up soon, right. and that doesn't work for me. <laughs> right, but he does say, what is this, Frankie and his pals? Oh, we got a title <laughs> drop. Da, 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 da. Anyway. Yeah. And then they all synchronize their watches, and we get close-ups of, of various monster hands with various kinds of watches. Why do they have 80s watches when they were, <laughs> they were in prison, or not in prison, but they, they, they got locked in the cave for how many years ago? Yeah, I think it was like hundreds of years. Yeah. But yeah, they all have various cool 80s watches. Um, and yeah, so they split up to search the whole place. Uh, but instantly, Frankie goes to the kitchen, gets distracted by chili a, beans. Yeah, a huge pot of chili beans, and he just starts going at it. Right. Um, we have... But uh, he knows it's a bad plan. He's like, I, it's going to be a bad idea, but I don't care. I just love chili beans. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I love it. The mummy ends up trying to look in like the deep freeze and uh, there's like a, like a just a drunk dude walking past and he's like, be careful in there. It's so cold you could freeze your gazongas off. Right. And Apophis is like, don't worry, mummy. You don't have, you have any gazongas. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> Which I feel like I have only ever heard the word gazongas used to describe like big boobs, not yeah. like... I mean, presumably here we're talking about balls, but, uh, right. uh, and sure enough, instantly they do get locked in the freezer. So the, the mummy is stuck in the, the, uh, cold freezer and just hit, he's just arguing with Apophis, you know, with himself basically. Right. Uh, and Dracula is just waiting for everybody to get back. Yeah. What, why is uh, he not searching for stuff? Right. Yeah. I mean, he's the most competent one. You'd think <laughs> that he would have the most luck. Yeah. Um, Humper also, he, he sees Frankie look er, eating beans and then like ends up finding a mirror and just gets distracted checking himself out in the mirror. Right, like uh, he's something hot, you know. <laughs> but the mirror's like right next to the freezer door, so when the mummy finally bursts out of the freezer, it smacks into Humper and knocks him down. Um, so the monsters all kind of regroup back at the dance floor and they're like, "None of us have had any luck." Uh, or they all regroup except for Frankie and Drax. Right. Like, Where, where'd Where's Frankie, Frankie go? Hunter's like, like, he's eating chili beans, and everyone's like, ah, shit. Oh, no, that's not going to be good. Um, so they're like, we better we better get out of here. It's going to be bad. So they're, like, running out of the building. They see some, you know, stragglers from the party, and they're like, you guys got to get out of here. And, and, I mean, they're just like, Frankie is going to fart, and it's going to be really bad. It's going to be the worst fart ever. We got to hurry. And and right. the crowd's like, okay, sure, we'll, we'll run out. Like, they, they listen to this dumb argument. Right, but then we have this weird, like, Thing where they run off screen but then the narrator i guess <laughs> is like no you idiots are running the wrong way yeah he's like this is a continuity error you should be running off screen left so yeah. it like rewinds and then it goes again and they run the other direction and he's well, like they perfect flip, they literally just flip the flip the screen and <laughs> play it back yeah it's so silly yeah um and yeah so they they get out and then sure enough frankie finally can't hold it in anymore he farts another giant fireball, mm -hmm. uh, and he gets scared by his own fart and runs out as well. Yeah. Um, so now 
all of the party goers and the monsters are all outside. Um, but the town council's alerted. By the way, why are they still adjourn like adjourned or um, why are they still gathered at this time of night? <laughs> Yeah, this is like a late party. You know, Drac is saying that the sun's going to come up soon. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's like late at night. But yep, the uh, um, yeah the, the town council goes into the party. They find where Frankie farted and it blew a hole in the wall. Uh, and there it's is a bag, a bag full of gold. Yeah. So Our money problems are over. Yay! Yeah, so Frankie's farts have saved the town. This is kind of, you know, it's basically one of those, like, you know, uh, we're going to do a ski competition to save right. the... <laughs> the, but, the, but the, it, the Civic Center or whatever? Yeah. yeah. But this time it's it's Frankenstein eating chili beans and farting. Um, I like so, how Dracula calls Frankenstein a uh, fart knocker one more time. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, all the monsters, like, you know, once they've kind of messed things up, they're like, all right, we're just going to go back home. So they all run away. Um, yeah, Clover's like, where's my wolfie? Yeah, and the entire crowd's like, that way. And he runs off after them. Yeah. Um, and we see the monsters go find, like, a barn. And they all go to hide in a barn. Mm -hmm. um, and Clover catches up. And we see uh, our mad scientist from the beginning and like a guy now who's like his assistant, like right, a male assistant with a big like mustache that's basically like his. Like he is the the young version to the mad scientist old guy. They <laughs> yeah. look almost identical. Just yeah. One and it might be another one of his kids for all we know. Like it very um, well could be. Um, but so he's like, all right, let's we so we we can start testing the time machine tomorrow. Now that the the party the festival is over. Yeah. Um, and you know the you're know, like yeah this is going to be perfect but then the monsters start like they bump into the time machine and they're messing with it and mad scientist is like oh no it's too late they you know they've started it it's it's going to you know it's going to happen right uh, we're going to have to try and shut it off but then uh it doesn't seem to work clover's like oh no where are they going yeah what have you done with my wolfie and yeah the the the, the you know the monsters are gone the time it's machine like did it and the scientist <laughs> turns to the camera and says, I guess you'll have to see the sequel to see where they went. Yeah, okay, <laughs> this movie's going to have a sequel, buddy. All right. <laughs> right, yeah. You're very overzealous about that. <laughs> and that takes us to credits, and I really love the first... So we, like, they do, the, you know, the kind of end credit thing where, like, you see the the pictures of the, the, char the main characters. Right. But here we see the guys without their makeup. So we get to see each of the actors who play the, the four or the, the five monsters, um, just like what they look like normally, which is kind of a fun little touch, you know, just like, this is the guy we've been watching this whole time. And you know, this is what he really looks like. Right. Um, so I thought that was kind of like a cute way to like, you know, these guys who probably want to be actors and are not likely to get many opportunities to be in front of a camera without a bunch of silly makeup. So they, they get at least their due as like regular people here at the end. Yeah. So yeah, it's 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 this is sure is a movie. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's I I mean it's not a perfect movie by any stretch of the imagination. No. It's got a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. It's it's you know I I often come back like it's clearly they're having fun and that's charming and that 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 can do a lot of heavy lifting for me. I you know if, if it looks like people are having a good time, I usually am too. Um, right. But surprisingly, it's very respectful to everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, Mostly. you know, like we said, there's there's a lot of women being groped, but, like, everybody seems cool. Like, n never does it seem like anybody feels, uh, you know, violated. Like, they're right. just kind of like, eh, no, I'm not into you, and go away. Yeah, um, it's, it's Clover Clover and Wolfie's relationship actually being a relationship or a yeah. relationship. Yeah, I, I really appreciate that angle. Um, I think, you know, it's... It's a product of its time in some ways, but manages to, to rise above a lot of the problems that it could have had. I do feel like if they had decided one way or the other to either really lean into the kids' angle and make it more juvenile and less sexual, or right. make it more sexual and less silly, I think it could have been... You know, I mean, like the, the Franco movies, like it could have been a little hornier and silly <laughs> in, in an adult way, and that would have been fun. The the kind of trying to thread the needle, I don't think it managed to succeed in either direction as far as that goes. But it is still a silly, fun movie, and like you're gonna have a good time with it. You know, it's it's definitely a good one for like hanging out with friends and just like laughing at some nonsense. Yeah, we didn't even talk about like all the monster makeup is pretty bad, bad. but like <laughs> uh, 
the uh, the werewolf like you know he's like this big goofy mask with like its mouth like hanging open and when he talks it doesn't really move um yeah they, wait it, a second what is that movie is it creep where the guy is wearing the wolf mask doesn't he call himself clover or something like that oh uh, you might be right yeah i know creep the, he does have a, a weird name um, the his his werewolf character. I'm gonna have to look at that now. That's gonna bother the shit out of me. Peach Fuzz. Oh, Peach Fuzz. Sorry, sorry. But yeah, in a similar vein, like a very like tame kind of silly name for something uh, that's terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know. Like it's just this is I think the uh, the second or third time I've seen this movie. It, like it's. It's not one that like is like a must watch every no. year or anything, but like I, you know, I enjoy coming back to it occasionally. It's if if it's on the on the TV during a Halloween party, like we like to talk about, mm-hmm. it's fine. Nobody's yeah. gonna sit there and probably be like, "Oh, this is this is a great piece of cinema." Yeah, and it is on Tubi also, so you can. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's an easy one to sit down and watch. Um, yeah, it's you know. Uh, there's not a lot of deep stuff to dig into here, but it's a silly good time if that's what you're looking for. Absolutely. All right. Well, I mean, I've got nothing else to say. <laughs> that's pretty yeah. much it for me. I think so that's anything it. Anything else you got? No, I, I think that's it. All right, Anthony. Well, this this week we've gone to a party. So, you know, we didn't get a lot to eat here. <laughs> How about next time we, uh, we hang out with Frankenstein's Hungry Dead? Yeah, So so when I found... Frankie and his pals was on Tubi. Um, I ended up kind of stumbling through and found several movies on Tubi that I have never heard of that are Frankenstein <laughs> movies. So uh, for all of September, we're going to be watching the dregs of Tubi and hopefully finding <laughs> the dregs some. Of Tubi. <laughs> hopefully, yeah, so we got four movies coming up that are all on Tubi. Hopefully. Some of them will be good. I'm sure not all of them, but we'll 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 see. <laughs> but yep, next week it's Frankenstein's Hungry Dead, which yeah, as I said, I I know nothing about. Yeah, it'll uh, be interesting. Yeah, we'll find out together. Absolutely. All right. Well, anything else we got to say about it? Ah, uh, I think that's it. All right. Where can they find us, Anthony? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, so you can find us on all the socials at the Frankencast, uh, including TikTok. We're starting to finally put some stuff over there, so we'd yeah. love to to have you over there. Um, you can also email us at thefrankencast at gmail.com. You can find us on YouTube, and you can find us at patreon.com slash thefrankencast, um, where we're uh, finishing up uh, the Frankencastle comic book series and going through that Turkish show Creature right now. But we got all kinds of odds and ends over there, and you know, tons and tons of episodes and, and you know, back episodes that we'd love to have you check out as well. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a lot of fun over there, so definitely check us out. Uh, anything else we got? I think that's it. All right. Well, thank you all. And once again, to be continued. <laughs> Looks like you survived another episode. The Freaking Cast is a production of FCR Media. It's hosted by Anthony Bowman and Eric Velasquez. Follow us on Twitter at The Freaking Cast or send us a letter at thefreakingcast at gmail.com. Our cover art is by Amanda Keller. You can find her at Keller Illustrations on Instagram. Our theme music is by Vivek Abhishek. Thanks for listening.